Shalom, 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 children of the Most High God. I believe that you are well. I believe that you are keeping safe. And Jehovah God is protecting you. My name is Onyango Eric, as always. I'm a letter to share the word of God with you. I believe that God is going to minister unto you and is going to illuminate your mind to understand some concept. You know, sometime, because it is done, does not justify it or does not verify it to be factual and legit. Because it is widely used, does not stamp it to be authentic. Because people are doing it, does not make it right. So today I just want to look at a topic that has a lot of misconception, a lot of uh, misfact, and a lot of doctrinal error. Today I just want to talk about the doctrine of the Eucharist, the doctrine of the Lord's Table, the doctrine of the Last Supper. What is it? Do we do it right? The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 8, that is the right way and the right time of doing things, but many don't know. So today we shall look at this topic of Eucharist, the Lord's Table, the Last Supper. Because we are accustomed, we grew up doing it, but we don't know the implication, the significance of the Lord's Supper. Why Jesus instituted it, the purpose for the Lord's Supper. So today, this topic can be traced from all the synoptic gospel. When we talk about synoptic gospel, we are talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can trace the story of the Lord's Supper from the four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But I chose today, we shall look at the account of Matthew. The account of Matthew. Kindly turn with me in the book of Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, sorry, chapter 26, verse 26. Matthew 26, verse 26 to 29. Matthew 26, verse 26 to 29. The Bible says, While they were eating, Jesus took a piece of bread, gave a prayer of thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. Take and eat it. He said, This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks to God, and gave it to them. Drink it all of you. He said, This is my blood. We seal God's covenant. My body pour out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will never again drink this wine until the day I drink the new wine with you in my father's kingdom. Verse 30, Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olive. So when we look at this mood, it was a, a festival. They were commemorating the Passover. They were celebrating the Passover. So they were coming together yearly to celebrate the Passover. We know Passover from the book of Exodus chapter 12. When God spared the children of the Israelites, God instructed them, you have to slaughter a lamb and smear the blood of that lamb on your doorpost. When the angel of death will be passing, he will be passing over your houses as he is slaughter, the firstborn sons, the firstborn of all the cattle of the Egyptian. So that they were commemorating. Every time they were having that feast, they were celebrating the Passover. So even Jesus, here, together with his disciples, they were celebrating the Passover. Now Jesus instituted the Last Supper. Because the Passover, you know the Old Testament, is Jesus concealed and the New Testament is Jesus revealed. The Old Testament prepares for the coming of the Messiah and the Old Test New Testament tells us how it happened. So the Old Testament was focusing on the Passover. Now Jesus sat them down and gave 
this instruction. He gave them a bread. He gave them a cup. And they partook together. And he blessed the cup. He blessed the bread. And they took together. And he said, Take it. Because this is my body. And this is my blood. When you take it, you remember my suffering. And I shall not take it again until we are together in the kingdom of God. So Jesus instructed it. So the Passover was a festival. So the Last Supper, because this is now, the Passover was a mirror of what to come. The Passover was a reflection of what to come. So when Jesus came and gave that ordinance, ordinance is an instruction. When you are given an instruction, you have to follow it to the letter. When you are given an instruction, you have to adhere to it. So Jesus gave us an instruction of the Lord's Supper. It's called the Lord's Supper because he initiated it that night. So it was a celebration. So it is not a Lord's Supper when there is no celebration because they were celebrating. The Passover was a celebration, was a feast, was a festival. So I have a problem with the people who take the Lord's Supper in funeral. I have a problem with the people who are taking the, the Lord's Supper in hospitals. I have a problem with the people who are taking the Lord's Supper in places that there is no celebration. Because it was taken during celebration. It was during the festival. Even Jesus was doing the same. I pick Matthew because Matthew record there was some singing. There was some hymn in that. So you should be in a position whereby you can sing. Whereby you can rejoice. Because it's a celebration. But there are people who are taking the Lord's table during, uh, during the, the burial. And you ask yourself, which Bible do you read? It was a festival. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 4. The Bible is telling us that is the right time. That is time for everything under the sun. A season of everything. Verse 4 tells us there is time for mourning. And there is a time for rejoicing. There is time for weeping. And there is time for laughter. So Lord's table is not for the time of mourning. It's for the time of rejoicing. It's not the time of sorrow. It is the time for laughter. Because it is a celebration. Jesus gave it. And he told us to do it. So there is an ordinance. There is an instruction that we should do it. And you know, child of God, it's a sacred thing. Because it's an instruction given by God. It's an instruction it's an integral part of Christian worship. The way Passover was a very important exercise in the Jewish calendar. It was the most important festival. It was the most sacred feast in that uh, to the children of Israel because it honors the last plague of the children of Israel. How God delivered them. How God gave them opportunity to live. The same with the blood of Jesus. Because the Passover, that lamp is a typology. When you talk about typology, it's a representation of Jesus Christ. That lamp represented the Christ. The blood that was shared, was shed, that was sprinkled, represented the blood of Jesus that was sprinkled on Mount Golgotha. It is a life-giving blood. So it's important to give this serious uh, thought and respect because it is so important. Because this blood, the way these children were remembering, oh God rescued us. We would have died, but God gave us another opportunity. The same way the, the Lord's, uh, Lord's table, the Eucharist, also give us a reflection, inspiration, that through the death of Jesus, we are saved from the death, from sin, from the condemnation of God. 
We are saved from the punishment. We are saved from the hell because of that blood that was shed. So they were celebrating because God gave them another opportunity. So child of God is important to know that God saved us. So the blood of Jesus is not a casual thing. It's not a cliche. It's not a routine practice. But it is an important exercise that we need to observe. It honors the plague, the firstborn. You can remember these children. They were slaves. They were under bondage for a period of 400 years. Being mistreated. Suffering. And God gave them another opportunity. So that supper, they were celebrating. Therefore, it's important also the church to celebrate the blood of Jesus. What Jesus did was more than enough. You cannot compare with what there is sharp contrast between what they did, what that lamp achieved, and what Jesus achieved. The lamp saved them for a night, but the blood of Jesus saved us forever. So that was just a mirror of things to come. The blood of Jesus is the life-giving blood. So that blood is not just a casual thing. It's not just a cup. It is a blood. It's a sacred thing. Because it is a, a celebration. It is an ordinance. So when Jesus gave us that instruction, it represented his blood, his own blood that was shed, his own body that was pierced, his own body that experienced pain, suffering, and all the tribulation. So this blood should be honored when we are taking this cup. You know, sometimes you have problem in church. All the churches originated from Catholic. We branch out the Lutheran, the Methodist, the Baptist, and all those. Even the Protestant. We have come from Catholic. So there are so many practices that we derive from them. But it's important to look at the Bible. The right position of the Eucharist. Because God instituted it. It is not a church practice. It is God's practice. It is not an ordinance of the church. It is the ordinance that was given by Jesus himself. So it's important to know the blood of Jesus give life. When we read 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7, the Bible says, You must remove the old yeast of sin that will be eternally pure. Then it will be like a new bunch of dust without any yeast. As indeed I know you actually are. For your Passover, our Passover festival is ready now that Christ, our Passover lamp, has been sacrificed. So the Passover lamp that those people slaughtered represented Christ is now the Passover lamp. So that blood that was shed is the blood of Jesus. The way they give it significance, the way they give it importance, that is the same treatment which will accord the blood and the, the body of Jesus Christ. It's important to know that the bread that was taken was a bread without yeast. It's a bread without yeast. And the cup is non-alcoholic. And I shall prove to you, it was non-alcoholic. It was non-alcoholic. Sometimes robbers break into a church. And when they break into, they come out with those wine. And they get drunk because they are taking what is not good. This cup, it was a festival, and a festival, is, it was a ritual, and God, God did not want people to get drunk, 
When we read the book of Leviticus chapter 10. Leviticus chapter 10. I just want to prove to you that it was not alcoholic. It was not alcoholic. So when you are taking alcohol in the Lord's table, you know what you are doing. When you are taking it, you know what you are doing. When you are partaking it and you are taking alcoholic substance, you know what you are taking. Because the cup was ceremonial one. Did not have alcohol content. So when you are taking a cup that has alcohol content, that one is not the Lord's table. Leviticus chapter 10 verse 8. The Lord said to Aaron, You and your sons are not to enter the tent of my presence after drinking wine or beer. If you do, you will die. This is the law to be kept by all descendants. So alcohol should not be found on the altar of the Lord. God gave clear instruction to the priest, Aaron and his sons, they should not enter the presence of the Lord while drunk, drinking wine or beer. If you do, you will die. This is a law to be kept by all your descendants. We are in the new dispensation. We are not in the Levitical order, but we are the priest in the order of Melchizedek. We are now the royal priesthood. First, uh, first Peter chapter 2, verse 9. So a priest should not be intoxicated. So the calf, you should not taste alcohol in the church. So the cup did not have alcohol. Because when you do it, you die. You die spiritually, you die physically. Because that is the order from the Lord. So the Lord's table should not have any content of alcohol. I like it, they say even beer. You know there are people who can argue the alcohol content of beer is very low. 5%. But the Bible is telling us when you take it, you shall surely die. You will die spiritually. Why? Because you will not see the kingdom of God. Galatians chapter 5 verse 20. You will not, drunkard will not inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. Drunkard will not inherit the kingdom of God. Re Revelation chapter 22. The drunkard will not see the kingdom of God. So the cup should not have any alcohol content. The bread. The bread should be yeast. Should be without yeast. Should be without yeast. Why should we have it without yeast? There is a significance. Why God wants us to take it without yeast? We cannot just take anything. We must be observant that the, car, the bread that we are taking does not contain yeast. Because there is significance of yeast. The same 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 7 and 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. Today we just want to demystify the Lord's table. So that when you partake it, you know what you are doing. You are not ignorant. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 2. There are people who are zealous for God, but they are ignorant. So we want to destroy the spirit of ignorance. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. The Bible says... Verse 8, let us celebrate our Passover. Let us celebrate our Passover. Then, not with bread, having the old east, uh, east of sin and wickedness, but with the bread that has no east, the bread of purity and truth. So the bread signified purity and truth. The east signified sin and wickedness. So when you are eating a bread that you are taking the, the lost table. You are saying, let us just take anything. Let me just take a duff. Let me just take what? Let me just take this. Let me take cake. You must know that there is, yeast should not be found in that bread. Because that yeast represented sin and wickedness. But bread without sin represent bread that is pure and as truthfulness. So it's important to know 
that is, it was a festival. And here the Bible says, when you come together, when you come together, and even Jesus said, when you come together, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 20. So it is a holy communion. It's not about you alone. You have to take it with people. You must take it in a gathering. You must take it in unison. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 20. The Bible says, When you meet together as a group, it's not the Lord's Supper that you are eating. So when you are meeting together as a group, so God wants us to partake it. That's why it's called Holy Communion. Because we are taking it together as a congregation, as a people. You can take it as a, your family. You can take but don't take it alone. Today I shall take it alone for demonstration. But I want you to know, it is important to take it with people. Take it with the crowd. Take it with the multitude. It's acceptable. So, it's important to know there is instruction that was given. And God extended this instruction to Apostle Paul. And Apostle Paul was apostle of the Gentile. That's why he did not have a specific church. He was sent to the people of the nations. You and I. So this instruction that Apostle Paul gave us is important to have serious thought about it. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17, in the following instruction from verse 17, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17, in the following instruction, however, I do not praise you because you meet for worship actually. Oh, sorry, 27. 27. Uh, it say, this means that every time you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So when you are taking it, it's a memorial to remember the death and the resurrection of Christ and his return. So when you are taking it, it's a memorial. There are people who are taking it to fight battles. There are people who are taking it so that they are wealthy. There are people who are taking it to expand their businesses. But the significance of the Lord's table is a remembrance of the death, resurrection, and the coming of Jesus Christ. When you come together, every time you eat this bread and drink from this cup, proclaim the Lord's death until he come. It follows that anyone who eats the Lord's bread or drink from his cup in a way that dishonor him, he or she is guilty of sin against the laws and the blood. So when you are taking it in a wrong manner, in unworthiness, you are doing what? You are guilty of sin against the Lord's body and the blood. So when you are taking it, you are not doing it, you are not guilty of the law of the man. You are not guilty of the law of the land. You are guilty of the breaking the law of the body of Christ. So when you don't take it well, you don't honor it. We have to honor it. You have to honor it. The Lord's table. So let's look at the unworthiness. There are people who are partaking it unworthily. How do we take it unworthily? Well, the Bible says you are dishonoring it. The Bible says, verse 28, so then, you should, tell, you should examine yourself first, and then examine yourself first, and then eat the bra bread and drink from the cup. I told you I have challenge with Catholics. Because Paul told us, you have to take the bread and you have to take the cup. But Catholic faithfuls, they don't take the cup. It's only the priest who takes the cup. So you are taking it unworthily. You have to take the bread and the cup. They go together. They have all significance. But Catholic, they only take the cup, the white uh, white staff that the priest placed in the, on their tongue. But this was a festival. You cannot tell me that can make you feel good. When you are taking the Lord's table, you must enjoy. Should be bigger. Should be something bigger. 
not something small. The bread and the cup. So it's important to ask your priest, where's my cup? Because the Bible is instructing me. Paul say instruction. Verse 17, the following instruction. So instruction should be followed to the letter. When in the court of law, you are brought a case forward, and there is some technicalities, that, for, that case will be dropped. Because of what? Technicality. You have not followed the instruction of filing. The same way when you are applying it. When you want to honor it, we have to do it correctly. We have to take the cup and the bread. The cup. It's not this stuff. This is what we are used to. A very small stuff. It was the cup. It was the cup. So we followed Catholic because they are taking in a smaller quantity. But that one does not limit you from taking a bigger quality. You can take it until you are, you are full. No problem. It was a festival. It ought to be a festival. Not taking a small stuff like this. You have to take until you feel good. The way you feel in a festival. The way you feel in a, any celebration. So when we take a cup and drink, then you eat the bread from the cup. For if people do not recognize the meaning of the lost body when they eat the bread and the cup from bread and drink from the cup, they bring judgment on themselves as they eat and drink. So when you don't do it well, you are bringing judgment on yourself. You are bringing judgment on yourself. Verse 30. That is why many of you are weak and ill and several have died. If we would have examined ourselves first, we would not have come under God's judgment. So it's important. Some people are weak. Some people are sick. Some people are dead because of taking the Lord's table unworthily. Because you don't honor the sacrifice that Jesus did. When you read your Bible, when every, everywhere, the, the flag is being lowered or it's being raised and you don't honor it you will be in a hot soup I was living near Mbakas police post when they are raising or they are lowering it and you don't stand still after them after their final whistle they will come for you and they shall apprehend you because you don't honor the sacrifice of that flag the blood that was shed for that flag the same way when you don't honor the Lord's table, you are attracting judgment on yourself because of the sacrifice that Christ did. When you don't do it, you are bringing judgment on yourself. How do we partake it unworthily? It means when we disregard the true meaning of the bread and the cup and and when you are writing and ignoring the tremendous price of our Savior paid for our salvation. So there is a price that was paid for that cup. It represents the sacrifice for us to be saved. So when you are not regarding it, when you are dishonoring it, when you are ignoring it, you know very well you are attracting the wrath of God. Because you don't honor it. You are attracting the wrath of God. Because you are ignorant of the sacrifice, the price that was paid for us to be saved. When you, I saw one day in a church, there is a man, he was holding the cup and is feeding a, a, his toddler, a young child, the cup. You don't understand the sacrifice that was made for you and I to be saved. So any day you are taking it unworthily, know that you are bringing judgment upon yourself. The second point, when you are taking it unworthily, how do you do it? Allowing the ceremony to become dead and formal ritual. Or partake the lost table in a confused manner. You know, we have so many backsliders. Some were 
altar boys. Some were pastors. So in those joints, their alcohol joints, they tried to do this, what they were doing on the altar. At am now, I'm doing it. I'm now doing the lost table. Here for the gin. Here for the whiskey. Here for the uh, different brand. You are making it dead. You are making the exercise dead. You are making the ceremony dead. When you are not doing it according to the instruction of God, it becomes dead. It becomes completely dead. When it's a formal ritual. In South Africa, there is a bishop that is a church of alcoholism. Even the bishop drinks there are different kind of alcohol on that altar. When you are a new member, the bishop first invites you by, by giving you uh, his brand. He tells you, test my brand. It's when you tell him, I don't like your brand. Give me this gin. Give me this whiskey. Give me this makali. Give me this beer. Give me this. Taking it unworthily. It become dead. And you are bringing wrath to yourself. Because these are sacred stuff. These are sacred, sanctified. And you are taking advantage. You are making it a joke. You are playing out of it. You have to be very cautious. Not to bring judgment upon yourself. The third way of doing it unworthily. In a wrong motive. In a wrong motive. Oh, I want to do it to attract my crowd. I want to do it. So that people look at us as Russia. I want to do it as an event. Uh -uh. When you are doing it for the wrong motive. That is different from remembrance of the death, resurrection and the coming of Jesus Christ. You are doing it for a wrong motive. That's why God will punish you. Because you are doing it for a wrong motive. I want to show it. that I'm re I want to show that I am a believer, so I'm going to partake it. I want to show that I'm holy, so I'm partaking it. I want to show people that our church is Russia, so we shall be doing it. We shall be doing it on this day to show people that we are Russia. No. We have to take it with a clear motive, clear conscience that it's about Jesus, about his death about his resurrection, and I know that he will come back so that I will have again an opportunity to take with him the cup and the body of him. Another is when you have not repented. When you have not repented, that's why the Bible says, examine yourself. Take stock of your life. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourself to be sure that you are in the faith. Examine yourself before taking it. Look at your life. Have you conned anybody? Have you scammed anybody? Have you done any wickedness? Have you done any sin? When you are a sinner, you will be taking a bread with yeast. Because yeast represents sin and wickedness. So any day that you are a pedophile, any day that you are homosexual and you are doing it, become unworthily. That's why Paul is saying, examine yourself. Examine yourself. Have you done any morality? Have you stole from anyone? Have you lied to anyone? Have you been a false witness anywhere? Examine yourself. Most of our leaders partake, yet they lie. Most of our leaders partake, yet they kill. Most of our leaders partake, and they do all kind of wickedness. So it becomes bread with yeast added on it. Because yeast represents wickedness. Yet God wants when you are taking it, you should be pure and truthful. Another challenge that will make you unworthy partaker, when you are taking it in a secular event. In a secular event. There are people who are taking it in a secular event. It was in a sacred place should be taken because it is about communion with God. Not only with men, but you are having communion with your God. So it should be sacred. Every day you are taking it, you are taking it with Jesus. Every day, Jesus is the center. Jesus takes preeminence.
Jesus is the center of that exercise. So any day you are taking it, Jesus is the, 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 the topic, the main idea. So when you are taking it in a secular event, Jesus cannot be found in a secular event. When you are taking it in club, Jesus cannot be found in club. Jesus cannot be found in a secular. You know there can be a building, but it's a secular place. It's a cathedral, but it's a secular place. As we are talking now, in America and Europe, there are some churches that have been abandoned and converted into pubs. So it is a structural cathedral, but inside there is a secular event. They are still using the cup, and that attracts the wrath of God. When you are taking it in a secular event, and these are what Apostle Paul captured that is not captured in the synoptic gospel, the unworthiness. And that's why some people die prematurely. Some people are weak. We are praying for you, but you are not getting stronger. The Bible says, tell the weak in the book of Isaiah uh, uh, chapter 40 verse 29 that it gives strength to the weak and power to the weary. But it's not happening because we are rushing to take the Lord's table unworthily. We are not trained on it. We are not taught about the Lord's table. That's why we are taking it unworthily. And we are getting weaker. We are getting more problems. We are getting sick. And we are also dying before our time. Because taking it unworthily. Paul says that some of you are weak. Some of you are sick. Some of you die because of taking it unworthily. Be warned. Don't die before your time because of taking it unworthily. You are taking it unworthily when you are taking the bread without a cup. It's unworthily. You are taking it when you have sin in you. You are taking it unworthily. You will die prematurely. You will be sick. You will be weak. You can be weak. You know there are so many aspects of being weak. You can be weak financially. You can be weak morally. You can be weak mar uh, mar maritally. You can be weak in so many dimensions. So it's important to take the Lord's table carefully. Don't rush because someone is inviting you for the Lord's table. Don't rush because you have been called out by a senior man. Don't rush because there is a euphoria of the Lord's table. Now there are so many events communion and welfare service, but you are not taught the unworthiness. You have not been taught the implication of partaking the Lord's table unworthily. You have to take it in a correct manner. You have to take it well, with a lot of understanding. So the wine and the bread used by Jesus in the Last Supper, it was a metaphor. It symbolized the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is valuable. The blood of Jesus has power. The blood of Jesus. The Bible says that the blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel. So when you are partaking the Lord's table, your things should be better. Because the blood speaks better things. The blood should speak resurrection. The blood should speak uh, redemption. The blood should speak growth. But it's not happening because we are taking the blood unworthily. The body of Christ. We are taking it casually. That's why there is a problem in our societies. That's why there is a problem in our churches. That's why there is a problem in our nation. Because our leaders, majority of them, take the Lord's communion. But look at their life. Look at what they stand for. Look at their principles. Because they are taking it unworthily, the wrath of God is befalling on the people. Because God said, it destroyed the king and the people. When David sinned, people suffered. So it's important to know we have to take it worthily in a way that pleases the Lord. Because this blood of the Lord, the blood of the Lamb, give us the power to destroy the enemy. The Bible says we defeated the evil one with the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. But we are not defeating the evil one because we are not taking the blood in the right manner. We are not taking the blood with a lot of seriousness. 
We are taking it casually. That's why we are not defeating the evil one. That's why pastors are falling. That's why members are falling. That's why church is dis disintegrating. Because the blood is not having power. When we are not taking it correctly, God disassociates with this. God cannot allow, you cannot force God to be in something that is taken in a way that brings him dishonor. People are writing memoirs. People are writing biographies. Their stories. Because they want people to appreciate what they did. The same way the blood give us that importance. Give us the memory of remembering the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. So God expects us to honor the blood and the body. So you should not, because they do it, because they take it in a small quantity in Catholic, so we have to do it. Because they take it a small, we don't take bread, so we have to follow it. No, we have to go to the scripture and we take it well. Finally, there are table of demons. Not all Lord's table come from the Lord. There are Lord's table, there are demon tables. There are demon tables. Three masons, they have their table. There are people, even there are clubs, they are doing it. Recently in the Olympic, you saw it by your own eyes. In Olympic, they had a, a blasphemy exercise, mocking Christianity, whereby there was a drug lord. The gays and lesbian and the LGBTQ, what, do they, what were they doing? They brought a man and they did the lost table. Significance, they tried to emulate what Jesus did. That was the table of demons. And there are so many tables of demons. Olympic in France last year, they were mocking believers. In fact, it's this year. Table of demons. So take the lost table worthily. Don't limit yourself. Enjoy. If you have money, enjoy. Let people have this flat bread. They don't have yeast. Let people enjoy. It's a festival. Don't limit yourself to this small stuff. Because we are following what we learned from Catholic, what we got from Catholic. No. Go to the scripture. It was a festival. As you are enjoying it, may God bless you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we bless your cup and your bread. As you partake it, King of glory, may you bless us, O God. Help us, O God, not to never to take it unworthily, but for the glory of honor of your name. Let your blood, O God, Heal us and make us strong. Terminate the spirit of death through your blood, O God. Because we are the great I am, we love you and we exalt your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray, believing and trusting. Amen. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.